So let's now do a more realistic test. Let's go ahead and include um, a reference over to our actual project here that we want to test. So we'll include that and workspace and it's the command parser project. So we say OK, OK, click OK there. And let's say, let's take a look, quick look here. Let's say we want to uh, test a parsed message. So we're going to include the header for that. Okay. And let's add a reference to that library as well. So back to the same place, libraries. And we can just use the workspace again. And we can say, command parser, we can go to the release, and that's the library we want to test right there. Say OK, say OK, and now we should be able to build up a nice test. So let's, uh, not going to explain a whole lot about what this class does. to parse and then we can check that just say check you can also use type ahead here to see what's in there so check equal and let's just take our command Let's compare that to, this is the piece that should come back as the command. And now both of our, fix the name of this one. And let's just uh, make this one pass. Left burner doesn't pull in any of the includes by default. So let's just say include string and using standard string come in and tell them about it okay um, builds. So there's our parser test. Let's switch over to MTTY. We can wait for this to boot. We can see back here the window goes away. It's starting to boot. Oh, interesting. So it failed. It looks like it's thinking it was expecting blank, but was system command. And that's because a well-formed message well-formed command in this particular parser ends with a semicolon right there. So let's check this again and let's change these like that. So it's expected and actual. And go ahead and run the test again. Come over here, clear out everything. You can see it finishing the build. Okay, two tests passed, so we know that the tests are working, and then there's more you can do. You can create suites of tests and use Test Runner um, to run all those, or to run that you can pass in parameters and run just a specific suite of tests, and, um, but that's all in the documentation. And that's how you run it, unit tests on a NetBurner. Unit Test Plus Plus also supports the concept of test fixtures, so if you have to do certain uh, setup and tear down, you can do it. So here's a couple of tests on a class called command, and we're instantiating it twice, and then we're using this um, insert command twice with the same uh, command string, and all, all the commands does is associates a string with a function pointer. 
So I've already rewritten this up above, so we'll get rid of these two commands now, and we'll go look at how it's done with test fixtures. So the first thing you do is, here's our function that we're going to have the function pointer to. You create a struct. You can create a class too. Structs are just all public. So, and then have a member function for the string and a member function for the class, and then in the uh, constructor we can actually do our insert. So now we have access to these items by using the macro test fixture, and then the first parameter being the fixture. That we'll bring that into the scope of the test, and then the name of our test is next. And then we can just call check. We can reference commands right here, and that saves us the instantiation and the string re repetition. And of course, the more tests you add, the more valuable this sort of approach is. And then um, here's where we're testing the execute command. And again, we're just going right to the commands uh, member variable and the command string and using that. And we can build this. And we have quite a few more tests now. Um, let's go ahead and run our parser test and let's pop over to MTTY. And there's our tests. Everything still passes. And that pretty much sums up the, the basics of using the unit test++.